Hey Trout Riders, welcome back to the Daily Ride. I hope you guys are doing well. Today the, our focal passage is going to come from Romans 5 and 8, which simply says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Daily Fire thought for today is that because there is, is power and redemption for everyone in the blood of Jesus Christ, there is power and redemption for me in the blood of Christ Jesus. Mark my word passages for today are Acts 13.38, Romans 5.9, Galatians 2.20 and 21, and 1 Peter 3.18. The scriptures that get us through the Bible in a year are Exodus 16, Luke 19, Job 34, and 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Today we're going to be talking about one of our favorite hymns, The Power of the Blood. There is power and redemption for every, everyone and the blood of Jesus Christ. A Buddhist once said that she could not understand how that could be. Maybe she said one man could die for a hundred or at most for a thousand but never for all mankind. Not only Buddhist but people of many religions find teaching of forgiveness throughout the blood of Jesus revolutionary. People generally expect to pay for their sins, either now or in some other existence. The Christian revelation is the glorious fact that Jesus has paid for it all. Our doubts are traitors when they prevent us from proving the power of Christ's precious cleansing blood. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. True forgiveness is, a substantial, is as substantial as the cross on which Jesus bought and paid for it. None of us can understand forgiveness unless we are taught by experience. If the joy of it could be communicated, some would consider it too wonderful to be true. You can be assured, however, that divine forgiveness is not a fairy tale or wishful thinking. It rests on a rock-solid foundation on the historic fact that Jesus Christ's redemptive sacrifice he suffered uh, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 The cross was no fiction. Real blood fell on real ground. And this real blood brings real cleansing to the real sinners like you and I. And does much more besides. God bless you guys. I hope you'll continually follow me here on the daily ride, and I'll see you on the next trail ride. So hey guys, trail riders, I forgot to put the reflection part in on the, this video, so here's the reflection time for this week. Great week. Hope that you enjoyed it. Hope that you've gotten a lot out of it. So here's what we want to reflect on. You know, true faith brings with it a lot of wonderful rewards. But here's one I bet you hadn't thought of uh, about in a while. It's sort of hidden in the middle of Hebrews 11:16, which says, Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. This is not talking about salvation. The picture here is the flip side of 1 John 2:28, where the Apostle John tells us to abide in Christ so that when he comes we won't be ashamed. The King James Version. The writer of Hebrews, who again I, I believe to be Paul, says God is not is not ashamed of, of these folks because they believed in Him and they lived in anticipation of His promises. Think about this: people you are ashamed of, you don't hang around with much. If I'm ashamed to be with you, I'm either going to avoid you, or we are going to be very uncomfortable with each other. Now hold on to your seat. The reason many Christians are living unhappy lives is because they believe that God is ashamed of them. 
they believe he doesn't want people to know that they know him. And since they spend the majority of their time walking in the old man, then the old ways, they see him as he's not happy to be walking and talking with them. They are not living a lives of real joy, peace, purpose, and direction. I realize this is a heavy concept for a weekend reflection, but give it some thought. For a practical step of application, a fascinating Bible study, take out your concordance. And if you don't have one, look the word ashamed up on Google and there's concordances to be found on the internet. Uh, and then go and set, and then take some time and, and look these passages up in the reference to the word ashamed. Shame comes upon us when we reflect on the old man and not the new. Jesus came to make all things new and to set us free. There is real freedom found when we see our old man crucified with Jesus. This is when we become the reflection of the light and darkness. There is a real eye-opener for you. God bless you guys. I hope you'll have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the next trail ride.